Hello, uh, my name is Yamane Kalata from Nagaoka University of Technology. Today I'm going to present uh, improving statistical machine translations through morphological analysis. This paper was presented at the Proceedings of Human Language Technology Conference in Conference on Empirical Methods of Natural Language Processing uh, in Vancouver. So we'll start off with the overview. Uh, the main purpose of this paper is to uh, improve machine translation between two different languages, morphologically different languages, and specifically high inflection language uh, as a source language and then low inflection as a target language. In this paper, the two uh, case languages are Czech and English. So the method focuses on uh, reducing data sparseness and also um, making the Czech input language uh, to be more English English like in morphological structure. So they used the Prague Czech English dependency tree bank corpus for this experiment and they reported that uh, the method that they have used improved machine translation performance uh, as we see here uh, the blue score raised from 0 0.27 to 0 0.33. So, um, the introduction. Generally, the task of machine translation uh, involves finding the most probable translation of some language uh, into another target language. So, for this, uh, most of the time, this model is used, this noisy channel model. And um, in, in this case, the PE is the language model and uh, the probability of f the foreign language conditioned on the uh, on the language e uh, forms the translation model so these are estimated the first one is estimated from a monolingual data and uh, which is the target data and the translation model has to be uh, estimated from two parallel corpus so the main issue in machine translation systems is if it is statistical, then uh, the uh, issue of uh, obtaining the parallel corpora, which is used for constructing the translation model. So if the, the method is statistical, then uh, it is needed that there should be huge uh, parallel corpora uh, from which uh, the model can ex extract sufficient statistical information. And another uh, problem is uh, regarding the similarity of the two uh, languages, the two languages that we are trying to translate. So if the similarity, if there is a structural similarity or morphological similarity between these two languages, then we would naturally expect um, more accurate translation pairs. But in, in this research, the two languages are morphologically distinct. Czech is highly inflected language and English is compared to Czech its low inflection language. So this paper tries to address these two issues uh, um, by reducing the um, data sparseness because of the shortage of parallel corpora. So instead of enlarging and enlarging continuously the parallel corpora in this, uh, in this research, what they tried to do is they tried to minimize the difference of these two languages and work on the already uh, existing corpora. So the first method is by creating morphological correspondence. And what this means is uh, trying to make the Czech language which is highly uh, inflected and which in which the inflections are attached to the to tokens trying to uh, make some correspondence between this between the target English language and the source Czech language so they identified three scenarios the first one is morphological distinctions exist in both languages and they identified where these morphological distinctions exist. So for example, there, there exists this morphological distinctions between verbs in the past tense and non prolars The second case is um, some morphological variants of Czech language are expressed by function words in English. So for example, genitive case like of, uh, instrumental case like by and with, these are function words in English but in, in case of Czech, they are attached to the words. So there are such kind of morphological variants. 
and the last case is uh, where there are no such correspondences so check morphological distinctions are absent in English and an example given here is gender in common nouns so in order to uh, construct uh, their methods they use it uh, a resource as I have mentioned Prague Czech English dependency tree bank and what this uh, this corpus constitutes or what this what what the information which is present in this corpus is fully annotated morphological information so this information also contains uh, the lima of the word in context and also a sequence of morphological tags uh, such as part of speech uh, tense gender person and so on so they say that there is there are there could be up to 15 uh, possible tags per word but this might apply for some words and it might not apply but and uh, for a maximum a word may, might have these 15 possible uh, informations on morphology so an excerpt from the, the corpus is shown here so this is the word and here we have the lima and here we have the this slot positions correspond to uh, morphological information such as part of speech tense and gender and where, where there is a dash it means that uh, the value of this morphological tag at this position is unspecified or it doesn't apply to that specific word so uh, the the meaning of this word in English is it would make sense for somebody to do it so this is the structure of the corpus so in order to reduce the morphological distinctions between these two languages they uh, they went into four different types of um, reduction strategies to create more English like um, Czech input data so the first case is limas here uh, they replaced word forms with associated lima using two schemes so when we are finding the lima of uh, words that means we are trying to reduce or to normalize that word into a similar word so the first case is limatizing certain part of speech other than nouns verbs and uh, pronouns so in um, well the idea why they limitized uh, other part of speech tags other than nouns verbs and and and, and pronouns is in English nouns verbs and pronouns get inflected in some way so there is some morphological information associated with this part of speech tags so if uh, if they limitized the check corresponding word inputs that means there is some information which is lost so in order to retain this cor morphological correspondence hopefully between Czech and English they uh, did not limitize the nouns and verbs and pronouns at first another case is the limitized less frequent word forms so if uh, they limitized or they made these uh, less frequent word forms that means the, the word forms are coming into similar words and that increases the frequency of the words so an example is given here this is the word here we have the word the original word the sentence and here we have limas of, of the word and here we have limas uh, plus pseudo words so these pseudo words are um, extra words which they added in order to make some correspondence between Czech and, and English we will see these pseudo words in the next slide and uh, uh, modified limas they, they attached uh, the pseudo words with the uh, base words so the first case was uh, trying to limitize the words and trying to uh, redu um, increase the frequency as well as reduce the data sparseness the next method is as I've said pseudo words and by that what they mean is they use some extra words some notations that correspond to function words in English function words like by with and to those words are not distinctly present in Czech they are attached to the word so they 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 constructed some extra words 
that could correspond to those function words in English. As we can see in here, this person 3, it means a uh, person in the third, third person, and so on. The third method was to modify limas. So in pseudo words, the, um, the extra words are found separate, but in modified limas, they try to attach the pseudo words with the actual words. So, in order to uh, make the Czech and the English corpus similar in some way. So, an example for convenient uh, treatment for, mo uh, for making modified limas is number marking on nouns and tense marking on verbs. And uh, another strategy they followed is to decompose or to segment the words into their morphemes. So, the input structure is similar to modified, uh, modified limas. That means the pseudo words are attached to, to, to words. But here, what's different is in, uh, instead of calculating word to word estimations, uh, they calculated morpheme to word uh, probabilities. As we can see on this formula, uh, the, uh, the, these morphemes, these F, J are the sequence of morphemes and EI is the English word. So um, here um, we can see that F, J means F, J, 0 up to F, uh, J, K and K is the number of morphemes of the word. So the first instance F, J, 0 is the lima and the other uh, FJ1 up to FJK are the morphemes of the, the word. So these morphemes are conditioned on the, on, on the word uh, as opposed to word-to-word -word correspondences. So this is the special thing that we see in, in this paper. So regarding the experimental setup, well, I've, as I've said, data is from the PCEDT corpus. And uh, for the language model, for the English language model, they used uh, Pen WSJ corpus, which is an ex uh, which is similar to the Word WSJ corpus, Wall Street Journal <laughs> corpus, and uh, they used CMU statistical language model in toolkit for making language models. For the translation model, they used Giza plus plus, and the uh, translator or the decoder was ISI rewrite decoder. So they had training data of 50,000 sentences and the test and development data are 250 sentences. Uh, these sentences were uh, translated into uh, English by using five uh, machine translators to uh, calculate the blue uh, score of these uh, 250 uh, test sentences. And the baseline that they took from this experiment was uh, 0.311 for development set and 0.27 for, for the test set. So before going to the results, let's see the um, parallel corpus statistics and the, um, the impact of changing or limitizing the words. So, here the x-axis is the token count, 1, 2, up to 10, and here we have the item count, which are uh, the word forms in the limas. So in the, when the, uh, in the case of token 1, we see a, a kind of spike for uh, Czech word forms when compared to English word forms. So because Czech is a highly inflected language, then we find uh, the rate of forming or generation uh, distinct uh, morphology uh, words is high. So that's why we see the, this, this um, graph as, well, it, it, it looks like as, uh, as much, twice as much as the English, uh, the English counterpart. So, but after limitizing these word forms, we see quite similar graph here, quite similar bar graph here. So they have managed to reduce the highly inflected uh, nature of the Czech language and uh, made the English word forms and the Czech, uh, the English, sorry, uh, lima, limas and the Czech limas somewhat similar in size. So this is a great reduction of 
uh, word forms and thereby this will reduce the data sparseness while doing the training. So similar case also for the other cases. So the results. Uh, the first case is when they limitized the words. So here there are different experiments. They limitized all except verbs, nouns, and pronouns for the reason that I mentioned before. Uh, they also limitized all except pronouns. So um, pronouns uh, are found in high frequency by nature in the corpus because there is no much inflection in pronouns. So already we find pronouns in high, ray, high, high frequency. So there, is, there might not be any point of limitizing pronouns because they are already found well sufficient in the corpus. So that's why they, uh, they didn't uh, limitize pronouns. And uh, they limitized less frequent forward forms. And finally, they, lim they limitized everything, full limitization. And surprisingly, this full limitization was found to perform better than the other uh, forms of limitization um, that we see here. So this is the result. Word to word, 0.311 for development set and 0.27 for test set. And uh, for other cases, we see the results. And the highest score is 0.37 when they limitized everything and when they consider the uh, n is the frequency. So if the frequency of the word is less than 50 in the corpus, they limitize the word. So as a, as a conclusion here, what we see or what we observe here is a limitization improves translation quality by reducing data sparseness. The impact of pseudo words. So, um, as we can see from the result here, these tag types uh, are uh, the morphological tags, morphological information in the corpus. So, person, tense, person and tense, number, case, negation, and so on. And uh, they experimented uh, by taking one by taking one morphological tag or by, by making pseudo words for, mal, for one morphological tag, for example, for person at a time, so that they can see the impact of that's, that's, uh, that particular task e, as a whole. So um, for pseudo words, we see high accuracy when they are used as uh, person correspondences and uh, negation correspondences. So 0.3. 5, 7, and 0 0.63 when compared to the other, um, to the other um, methods. These are the highest scores from this row, and this is the highest score from this row. Uh, but for other cases, for example, for numbers, this is the lowest score when compared to this row. So um, the pseudo words are separate words. Uh, which, which are usually found attached in check. But for numerals, this t kind of technique doesn't seem to have any uh, use when, when it comes to uh, numbers. And this is the, the statistics of the um, count of these different morphological tags. The third method is modified limas, which, uh, in which the uh, limas are attached to the words, I mean the uh, pseudo words are attached to the limas or to the words. And here, particularly in case of number and tense, this uh, method showed an improvement. As we can see here, this row for person and tense is the highest score here, 0 0.362. And here for number, we see the highest score, 0 0.367. And this is for the modified Limas case. The next case is morphemes. And when all, when the word is uh, decomposed in, into its morphemes and when they do the uh, experiment, we see that the, uh, when compared to the other methods, this is the lowest score. Uh, well, it's somewhat similar here for the tens, 0 0.65 and 0 0.364, but otherwise this, this method uh, failed to uh, perform well when compared to the other methods. So 
by collecting this information for from these four cases they will they were able to understand which method is better suited to which task so by combining these uh, methods they came up with some combined model so pseudo words were applied to person and negation tags and modified limas were applied to number and tense cases so by combining these kind of methods they um, they, they constructed a model which outperformed the other individual cases. So this is the highest score, 0 0.39 for development set and 0 0.33 for the test set. So in conclusion, uh, in this research, they showed that morphological analysis of highly inflected languages can improve machine translation uh, between high inflection and low inflection languages. And uh, this was done in, in generally two methods. One is simple limitization and the other that to reduce the um, data sparseness. And the other is uh, trying to make the input data uh, like the output data by making, uh, by understanding the morphology and the structure of the language and making adjustments wherever necessary. So these were the two techniques that were showed here and they, uh, they showed some improvements on the mission translation uh, task. So although these adjustments or arrangements need to be determined for each language pair, but generally we can say this approach may be applicable for other languages also. But in, 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 in different languages, there will be some different inputs or treatments in order to make some correspondences between input and output uh, data. So that's all the presentation for today. Thank you.